Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to med school and other professional programs. Today, we're gonna to cover a high yield topic that spans biobiochem and psych -soch, neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that allow nerve cells to communicate with each other and with other cells in the body. There are many different neurotransmitters, each with its own unique function and effects on the body. In this video, we're gonna cover all of the important ones you need to know for your MCAT. So get your Anki notes ready because we wanna turn all of these into Anki cards. Let's begin alphabetically with acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, which is used by the somatic nervous system to move muscles, is also used by the parasympathetic nervous system and in the central nervous system, all for signaling purposes, all for a lot of different things. Really what you wanna focus on for acetylcholine is it's what allows muscles to move, as well as the last signaling molecule in the parasympathetic nervous system, and both the first signaling molecule in, in both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Next, we have dopamine. Dopamine maintains smooth muscle movements and steady posture. Oftentimes, when we think of dopamine for the MCAT, you wanna be thinking Parkinson's. Parkinson's is caused by the loss of dopaminergic cells, or cells that are producing dopamine. Interestingly, one of the treatments for Parkinson's is to basically flood the brain with a precursor of dopamine called L-DOPA. Next up are endorphins and ankylophants. These are natural painkillers that can help reduce pain and promote the feelings of pleasure and well-being. These are the things that people are talking about when they say, oh, I just I ran five miles and got the runner's high. This is because their brain is being flooded with endorphins and it's making them feel good. It's helping reduce the pain of running. Next, I want to talk about epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are two often confused neurotransmitters and hormones because they are complicated and very similar in their name. So let's talk about what they do. For the purpose of the MCAT, they're doing the exact same thing. They're promoting wakefulness as well as more often starting that fight or flight response. What's different is how they act. So epinephrine is acting more like a hormone where it's going in the blood supply, it's acting everywhere, doing crazy stuff, activating the fight or flight scent, acting, activating the fight or flight response in your muscles, lungs, everywhere. Whereas norepinephrine is acting more like a neurotransmitter. Norepinephrine is often found in the brain where it's acting on nerve cells as opposed to in the muscles or blood vessels. Next up, we have GABA. GABA and glycine are both inhibitory neurotransmitters that act as brain quote-unquote stabilizers by reducing the activity of other neurons and promoting relaxation. The way they do this is quite interesting. So GABA is going to bind to a chlorine channel and open it. This is going to cause chlorine to flood into the cell. And what's going to happen if we flood a neuron with chlorine? Well, we know that chlorine has a negative charge. So if more negative charge is going inside of the cell, this is gonna make the cell much more negative. Okay, and if we've got a more negative cell, we have decreased the relative voltage of this neuron. And what do we call it when we decrease the voltage of a cell? Oh, hyperpolarization. So we've made it less likely that this neuron will fire when stimulated from a stimulatory neurotransmitter, such as glutamate. Glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter you wanna know for the MCAT. It is excitatory and stimulates the activity of other neurons. And next we have serotonin, which helps modulate mood, sleep, eating, and dreaming, a whole host of things. And finally, I just want to talk about cortisol. So cortisol is a stress hormone released by the adrenal cortex, so not quite a neurotransmitter. However, it does act on the brain. And all you need to know about cortisol is it's promoting stress and also causing that fight or flight response to become active. Here's a good moment for a screenshot if you haven't gotten it already. Again, I strongly recommend putting these into your Anki or some other space repetition program. And I want to close by saying that neurotransmitters play a crucial role in our bodies, allowing nerve cells to communicate and coordinate with each other. By understanding the different neurotransmitters and their functions, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the complex workings of the brain and the body, which you guessed it, you're going to need to understand for the MCAT and medical school. So start learning it now. Thank you so much for watching our video on neurotransmitters, and I will see you next time.